the legends at it with um, another Dodgers great. I mean, it's just a cornucopia of greatness here at Legends at It. Of course, it's called Legends at It. Congratulations on another successful event. Uh, it's it's wow. been so much fun. You know, ever since we've been open and you've supported us, uh, it's been wonderful. Uh, the people that have come through the roster, and we expanded our roster today with Steve Garvey and Steve Sachs. We had a return visitor in Jaime Harin. It's been a great, great day. Right, and you had the station out here. You've got baseball teams. The, the community is really drawn to Legends Addict. Yeah, um, some of them are going, why aren't you selling this? Why aren't you selling that? We're like, we want to keep the fan experience going. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, about 75% of our stuff is for sale. And then the others are display for the fan experience. And I think it's getting out there that this is not only a store, but this is a place you need to come. Because uh, we put this together with our heart and our passion. And so every inch of this place is about the fan experience. And, and then to bring the, the athletes in and to bring my friends in, uh, that's the fun part too, because I want them to be treated the way I would like to be treated. And every one of them that is here has goes through it with our staff, goes through it with the media. Uh, they say this is the best autograph session, best meeting of fans that I've ever had. Right. It seems like everyone had such a good time. They were even hanging around after they were done signing and yeah. taking photos. And one thing we spoke with uh, Steve Garvey. Yeah. I'm just throwing names out. We spoke with Steve Garvey. <laughs> and um, he was talking about how sports is one of the few things in this country right now that brings us together right well you know at, at first probably people become a sports fan because of a passion or they somebody in their family has played it and is teaching them about it uh, but then once you get to be a fan at this distance uh, it does bring people together uh, team chemistry is like a shared experience and what better shared experience than a sporting event where you're with family or friends or making new friends and you all of a sudden experience Freddie Freeman's Grand Slam in the World Series, or you experience, go back to 88 and Kirk Gibson's home run in game one, or you watch some great pitching, or you watch something and you have this camaraderie. It's not only a distraction from the real world, right. but it's entertaining and it's memory making and it bonds people together. Absolutely, and what a wonderful, amazing distraction, winning the World Series. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like one of the ultimate distractions. Yeah. And one thing I wanted to bring up is Walker Bueller. Uh, wearing your jersey yeah. and now we're hearing that you guys are buds like tell me about you know the similarities 88 you right. walker well it, it started back when rick honeycutt was the pitching coach for the dodgers and i was in uniform during spring training and they came to me and said would you be walker's mentor or really kind of just hang out with them and, and and i'm like yeah for sure and we took a golf cart ride that day and talked pitching and talked life and and it's built from there and then over the years he comes back from his second Tommy John. We talk after outings or text. And you know what? Walker knows how to pitch. Right. But, but through the struggles, even though you know it, you need to learn maybe how to adjust it. And maybe you need somebody to encourage you that it's still there. Right. And so our relationship built through his struggles more than through his successes. Right. And when the struggles hit, um, I do a lot of text messaging in the middle of the night after I'd get home from the game and drink a glass of wine, I'm like, I'm going to text Walker and encourage him. And, you know, in pitching, um, you make a pitch, and out of 10 pitches, when you're rehabbing, maybe two are what you like. The other eight are bad. You know, maybe a ball or maybe right down the middle. And then, but you can see, since I've been through a shoulder reconstruction, you can see that if there's two there, then he'd get it to four. And if there's four there, he can get it to eight. And if he can get it eight out of 10 times where he wants, he's gonna get big league hitters out. Right. And so I could see that progression, even though he wasn't getting results, even though the media is like, he's not it, even though he was threatened to be taken out of the rotation because he was bad, you could still see the progression. And so I started to encourage him like, you got this still. And, and vintage Bueller is in there and you can help carry this team to a world championship. And that's in the midst of a six and a seven ERA at the end of the season when he was going through it. And so I think his way of saying thank you was to wear my jersey. And that, that's very, very special to me because I had mentors. I had Sandy Koufax, I had Don Drysdale, I had Jaime Harin, Vin Scully, Tommy Lasorda, all these guys. And it's really weird to be the guy that was receiving it and then achieving it. And now you're the guy giving it a little bit. But, but it is that whole saying, you know, pass it on, pass it forward, you know, and, and it's, it's really fulfilling because I can't do it anymore, but it's fulfilling to watch somebody else do it. Well, you're still doing it, but you're doing it in a way that's helping others. Yeah. And then when, or, when, oh, when Oral, when Walker's yeah. done with his 
uh, journey. He'll pass, it on. He'll pass it on. So he's learning from grades, yeah. and I just, I just really appreciate that you never stop believing in him because you're right. A lot of the media, a lot of fans were like, yeah. he's not it, and so he did thank you with that, yeah. and and this season has been so up and down. Yeah. How about Dave Roberts not being nominated oh, for manager man, of the year? year. Like yeah. that's such a yeah. The, the bias, the bias is probably our payroll. But um, after the payroll, uh, most of that payroll wasn't on the field a whole lot of times. So that's when the managing comes in and keeping guys that are in the second position ready to be in first position and keeping the guys in first position that get hurt and are coming back, encouraging them and keeping it together as a team. Right. And so a lot of roster movements, a lot of young guys getting opportunities again, but they came through. and. Uh, they had learned an awful lot from the other failures in the World Series and in the playoffs. And I think that wisdom of how to deal with off time, how to deal with pressure in the moment, how to deal with the expectation that you're supposed to win or the season's gone, I think they've all learned a lot of mighty lessons. They did, and then I'm hoping that this is just going to continue with the talent yep. and that we just need them to be healthy. Yep. And I'm going to leave you with one last uh topic okay. we spoke with steve Sachs. we spoke with steve garvey right. we asked about fernando oh yeah our number 34 yep. he's missed so dearly mm -hmm. and winning the world series especially that game one with his right. family there like that yeah. had to happen yeah. i wanted to bring up and thank you yeah. for yeah. honoring him before the game i was there i saw you lay the flowers down yeah. you and steve Yeager, like such a great yeah. tribute was that your idea tell me about no. honoring fernando I think it's more of a uh, organizational idea from meetings that we're all involved in and, and pitching in to give ideas and then they all put it, bring it together. Lon Rosen, who's vice president, and uh, you know Greg Taylor, who does a lot of great work over there, Carrie Osborne. There's just so many great people that understand Dodger history and understand how to, to honor someone like Fernando. And we did it for the family and for Linda. Um, there was supposed to be a first pitch, but it was a first placement, you know, by his, by his number. And uh, Fernando deserved everything. Uh, whatever we do for him is not enough because what he did for L.A., for the Latino community, for all of baseball, uh, he transcended the sport. Um, there's Jackie Robinson crossing the, the color barrier. There's Roberto Clemente getting Latino players treated with respect and showing that they have a bigger life than just baseball and a great arm in right field and 3,000 hits. And then there's Fernando Valenzuela that had a community come together with the Dodgers and and put seal the wounds from when Dodger Stadium was built to uh, to be so exciting and so dynamic as a player to to make people forget again mm -hmm. about the past and look to the future and so Fernando's job or his role was to have people fall in love with the Dodgers again and and baseball and it totally worked totally and so, worked. generational yeah so it's he, his impact is is like a Jackie Robinson, is like a Roberto Clemente, and it started in L.A. and then it grew around the world. Well, thank you for doing that for us fans, for Los Angeles, for baseball. It's it's just tremendous what yeah. you guys have done for Fernando, and I do appreciate you keep telling the stories yeah. about Freddie. You guys called yeah. him Freddie. I well, love that Freddie story. Freeman, when Freddie Freeman hits the Grand Slam, I had nicknamed Fernando Freddie because right. we were in Double A together, and then he made it to the big leagues in '81. I didn't make it till '83, so we had some years there where we were apart. But then we got back together and played together in the big leagues for about eight years. So wow. we, we were teammates and uh, and good friends and. Yeah. Uh, miss him very much. We miss him very much. Thank you. Thank you for having us.